All right, guys, welcome back. It's Tush coming at you. It's uh, Saturday, January the 13th, 2024, and we are back on the seat restoration project for the 1959 Triumph TR3A project. And uh, we've got the seat base up on the table this morning, another episode of uh, Coffee Table Tech, <laughs> we're going to call it. Anyway, uh, I think the first thing we're going to do today, uh, again, this is part two, so this is the reconstruction versus part one, which was the deconstruction of the seats. And if you haven't watched part one, I'll put a link up in the corner to uh, part one so you can go back and see me tearing these seats apart. So anyway, the first thing I'm going to do, I think, is start restoring or start restructuring the bottom horsehair pad. There's a little bit uh, missing down here in this corner down here, and it's a little thin ac across a few of the spots here in the middle. So I think what we'll do is we restore this pad first and probably remove the old batting before we put new batting on before we get it attached back to the spring. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's break it down into parts. We'll start on the padding first and go from there. We'll set you up on a tripod. All right, let's uh, start talking about the uh, the bottom pad here. So here's the bottom side of the horsehair pad. If I flip it over, there is the top side with the batting there on the top. Some guys will uh, get rid of this entirely and just go with foam, but I've decided that I'm going to uh, use this horsehair. It's not in that bad a shape, actually, and I like that it's the original material. So we're going to go with this versus foam or some other uh, substructure for the seat. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, repurpose this piece, but I'm going to add to it where there are areas that need some work. So over here, for example, uh, we're going to restructure this here with some uh, coconut fiber and some of the areas that are a little thin here, there's an area that's thin here. And I'm sure underneath this batting, there's gonna be another area that's a little bit thin that we can restructure here on the bottom. So we'll glue some new pieces in here and some new structure up on the side in order to reuse this. So let me work on the bottom side of this first with the, uh, with the coconut fiber mats that I have. And then we will work on the top side and see if there's any work that needs to be done up there. Right, guys hopefully you were able to follow along in the time lapse a little bit so you probably saw me add a little piece of foam here to the top side of the horsehair this is half inch foam so uh, that should just make it a little bit more comfortable to sit on we did add another piece of batting under the existing batting just to take in a little uh, bit of space there they don't want to make it too high again we may have to go back in and restuff this but this is my initial attempt at uh, getting the cover to fit properly so on the bottom side you probably saw me i cut out some of that uh, coconut fiber and just glued it here on the inside um, circumference of the seat and it's still got the overlap here on the shoulders to go across, around down the side of, of the edges of the seat frame. Uh, there is a little area here that we're going to probably try to fix once it's back on the frame. We'll actually probably use the frame to glue to. We'll see how that works out. But other than that, there again, here is the original batting on how that was down at the bottom. So as you can see there. Anyway, let's uh, bring the base, the seat base out and see how this fits on the seat base. Okay, we've got the uh, seat base loosely fit up. Obviously, the uh, springs still need to be wrapped in the burlap, but I wanted to keep it unwrapped so we could actually see the outline of the seat spring a little bit better when we fit it inside the cover here. And I think it looks pretty good. So I've uh, followed this all the way around. Obviously, this will wrap up exactly the way it is and create a soft edge here on the sides, and the material won't cut into the actual uh, seat frame itself. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Like again, as mentioned, we may need to build up on this side over here. Let me just uh, bring you around if I can. So it looks pretty good with the exception of here. You could probably use a little bit more material just in this area here. But other than that, maybe I'll just do a little bit of foam or something like that. But that foam should wrap around there nicely as well and help that out. So yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. So I think what we'll do now is we will go ahead and we'll wrap the uh, wrap the spring itself in burlap. So I've got the burlap standing by. Still haven't uh, quite decided how I'm going to attach the burlap to this uh, frame. 
I'm thinking I'm just stapling it. As I'd mentioned, I think when I took it off, it looked like it was just stapled. So we'll probably do that. Anyway, let's break out the burlap. if you can tell from the time lapse but I've decided to try to actually sew the bur burlap cover on around the spring and what I've got is just a, uh, a basically a curved needle so I guess you can call this an upholstery needle or um, a mattress needle and uh, we're just using that basically to uh, sew around the edge of the seat frame and we're just folding the edge of the burlap over to make it a little bit thicker just to protect the uh, the edge of the material from the actual frame. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm not gonna film the whole entire thing, or the whole entire process of me going around the entire edge of the frame. Just know that that's what I'm doing, or at least I'm gonna attempt to do it. Hopefully it'll work out okay. And we'll come back when we're done this part of the uh, restoration process. All right, quick update for you guys. We've gone ahead and we've stitched that uh, cover or the burlap all the way around. I actually stitched it originally with the sail uh, thread. I actually tacked it in a few spots with some uh, hog rings as well. And then I finally went around with the cotton thread and just went uh, one more time just to make sure it was affixed tightly. So that looks pretty good. Uh, you remember me talking about how this was wrapped at the front? Uh, when I took it off, there were these little sort of pockets. That's why, because of the corners. So it's pretty much like the way it came off the car with these little folds here in the front. So I got us looking pretty good, pretty tight. So I think we can probably go on to the next step now and that will be to put the top padding back on and then we can fit the cover. I do have a little bit of a concern about this uh, possible for this thread to actually show through the cover. If that's the case, then I'm, I've got a really thin piece of foam I can wrap around the edge here to mitigate that, but I don't think it's gonna be an issue, but we'll find out shortly once we start uh, fitting the cover on top of the uh, springs here. All right, the time has come to see if the cover will actually fit over the base. So we're gonna wrestle that on there. Now, I understand that I may need to take some material out. I may add to, need to add some material in. We'll have to wait and see until we get the cover on. So. I'll throw you on time lapse here. You can see me struggle with getting the cover on, I'm sure. And uh, we'll see what it looks like once that's on there for the first time. Um, that's not bad as an initial fit up. There's some areas I definitely need to work on. Um, at the front here, we need to fill this out a little bit. There's a little bit of a dent here in the front, so need some extra padding here in the front. But for the most part, the rest of it looks okay. It should have a little bit of a dome to it, is my understanding. So it definitely has a little bit of a dome in the center. If you look at it from here, it is domed slightly in the center, which is good. The um, piping doesn't look too bad except for areas that it needs to be filled a little bit, like I said, and obviously the cover needs to be pulled and get the wrinkles out. But other than that, I don't think it looks too, too bad. So I think what I can do now is I can actually 
take this cover off and um, I can actually sew on the actual uh, horsehair to the frame because that needs to be fixed to the frame and then we can probably come back and then fit this cover again and then fill out the areas that I know we need to fill out like up here for example. There's a couple other things I noticed here as well. The string doesn't show but there's a couple of uh, hog rings that I actually put back in here just to help me and those they, you won't be actually able to see those, but they may rip the material at some point. So I'll probably remove these hog rings that I put in back here just in case I don't want it to rip through the material. So uh, I can either do that or maybe put some foam over that area. But other than that, I think that's a good first trial fit just with the, uh, with the clips. And uh, now we can go ahead and we can start, uh, like I said, sewing the cover on. Then we'll come back and we'll do the real thing with hog rings. Wish me luck. It took a while to get there, um, but we have it looking pretty good and wrinkle-free, I think. Again, I've just clipped it on the bottom, as you saw in the time-lapse video, so nothing is hog-ringed yet, but I wanted to make sure I could get all the wrinkles out. So there's what it looks like on the bottom. And uh, sides look pretty good. The nose looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good there as well. So, And the back looks good. So I think now we can go ahead and see if we can get this uh, successfully hog ringed up and keep it as tight as it is now. So we'll break out the hog rings and uh, hopefully all goes well and uh, we don't have to take the cover back off and do anything crazy. All right, here we go on the hog ringing. I'm going to be using the smallest hog rings that I have. Not sure the size, maybe I can look it up and put them in here, but uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see how small those are. So that's what I'm going to be using. I've already put two in, so we'll make sure we keep the material stretched and we'll remove the clamps as we move along and hopefully we'll be good in the end. So I'll put you on time lapse and follow along with the hog rings. guys I'm uh, quite happy with the end result uh, everything looks pretty good seams look pretty good not many wrinkles seems to be stretched okay the doming is good so the front of it looks pretty good so I'm pretty happy with that considering so looks uh, if you want to see the underside flip it over here so there's with my hog rings. Seem to go pretty well. And again, uh, not too bad as far as the wrinkles are concerned on the sides, which is good. Both sides look good. The back looks good, nice and tight. So yeah, I'm happy with that for me. Pretty darn good. Took a while to get there. Definitely a big help with the, um, with the clips, with the paper clips, to uh, get the cover situated and stretched the way you want it before you actually start hog ringing it, because you end up having to move it around and stretch it uh, here and there. Uh, one quick note on that, um, the cotton string on the bottom, you can actually see it a little bit through the covers. Uh, not really well, but you can actually see it a little bit. The only thing is you're never gonna see that anyway because it sits down into a channel, channel 
uh, or there's a lip basically on the uh, seat frame that's going to hide that anyway. So we're good to go there. Nothing to be worried about. So yeah, I'm happy with that. There's a little bit of a dip in the beading here. I tried to work on that, but I think it's because where this uh, seam comes together here, there's a little bit of an issue. The other side's better. Not 100% perfect, but better. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. I can't, uh, I can't complain. So anyway, I think what we'll do now is we're going to move on to the seat base, the metal frame, and we're going to clean that up on the base uh, and get it painted into semi-gloss black so then we can start working on the back tomorrow. All right, welcome back. It's the next day, and as promised, I did get the seat base painted. I didn't do anything with the back other than clean it up with a Scotch-Brite pad to remove any of the loose stuff that was on there. Everything else is pretty stuck to the uh, to the base, and I think I can just glue right over it. Hopefully, I'm not going to be mistaken there, but it should be okay. Uh, I have the new material out here for the piece that wraps around the base of the seat and the old piece just as a reference for a template. We've got the new cover and the old cover. The old cover I just want to keep for reference as well. One of the old covers, that was the top cover, not the bottom cover. So we've got those standing by. And then we've got our glue, our scissors, our clips standing by as well. I should make note that I did not replace the tack strips on the inside. The tack strips are in good shape and the tack strips on the bottom are in good shape, but I didn't have to replace those, fortunately. So I think we're ready to go. Uh, we've got our foam standing by, we've got our horsehair standing by, and uh, I'll take you along the process of doing the back piece before we uh, actually get the seat put back together. Looking forward to it. Kind of going out on a limb here and uh, decided to wrap the outside of the frame in half inch foam so we've got that wrapped it's pretty thin foam but we've got that wrapped all the way around the back and you can see where the the horsehair basically came down to as an overlap on the back here so i still have a little bit of a gap to fill which we can fill with the horsehair and with some of the batting as well. So I'm gonna grab that front pad and we're probably gonna build that up a little bit as well with that coir, that coconut uh, matting, like I did for the seat base. That seemed to work out pretty well. So let me grab that seat, the old seat back right now, and we'll take a look at it and make some repairs to that before we lay it back in the back of the uh, frame here. All right, we've got the back piece glued back on to the back of the uh, metal and uh, we're just gonna reduce some batting here around the edges and uh, sort of simulate what was on there. You can see the old batting below it. So I think we'll leave the old batting. We'll just uh, add a little bit more because I'm sure it's worn down over the years, particularly it seems like up in this corner. So we're going to probably just put some batting on here and uh, glue it lightly so it doesn't move when I try to slip the cover on but I think we're getting pretty close to actually trying to fit a cover and see what it looks like. And then uh, obviously probably gonna have to remove the cover several times in order to pack it out. But uh, we're getting closer to getting the cover on. So I thought I'd just give you a quick shot of that. I can give you a shot around the back. I've just got it draped over the back here. And uh, this is gonna sort of roll over and it's gonna create a nice soft edge here on the back. So we'll just fix that in place with a little bit of glue like I'd mentioned, and then we'll do a trial cover fit. All right, just taking a quick look at the initial cover fitment and it's not fitting great. A um, couple things, I think I need to pack it out definitely more up the top here. Secondly, I'm not quite sure whether it's on square. I think it needs to go to the right a little bit. Thirdly, it definitely needs to pull down because I don't have a lot of material here at the back. 
which actually should pull down and under and nail to the nailing strip. And I'll have a hard time stretching that much further than it's already stretched. So need to go back, take the cover off, do a few things to hopefully tweak that and uh, get the shape looking better at the top in particular. I also need to go back and revisit how the sides were fastened down because I need to understand how this is supposed to look in this area down here with this flap of material and where this actually gets, how much of this gets pulled into the uh, nailing strip at the bottom, what type of angle there is. So anyway, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break, a little bit of a breather and rethink this and pull the cover back off eventually. I thought I'd give you a quick shot of where we're at. So it's not a simple, put it on and you're done. It's gonna take, uh, as mentioned, on and off, I'm sure a few times. All right, guys, seat back is now complete. And uh, overall, it's not too bad. There are some areas that I'm not 100% happy with. Up here, you can see a few wrinkles. Probably could have used a bit more stuffing there. But uh, seams-wise, it looks pretty good. The seams follow where they should, all the way across the top and down the sides. If I flip this down here, you can see how the seam runs down here. Not entirely happy with this area down here. It's still a little bit wrinkly. I can still maybe work a few of those wrinkles out. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Seems look good on this side. So let me give you a quick shot of how it's stapled down the bottom. So there's an inner flap, which is this flap that comes from the outside and under that gets stapled first. And then this outside flap gets stapled uh, to the nailing strip along the bottom. So it's a little finicky trying to get the staples in there, especially the interior flaps. a little bit uh, hard to get your hand in there, especially when your hands are as big as mine. But uh, like I said, I think it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of wrinkling here, but let me put the seat cushion in and you can see it'll end up pulling that, or sorry, pushes the back in a little bit and gets rid of a few of those wrinkles as well. So let me show you with the seat cover or the seat base installed. And then you can see the completed seat as one unit. All right, guys, there's the official unveiling of the completed seat. Like I said, I'm, I'm quite happy with the seat bottom. The seat back probably could be a little bit better, but I'm not a trimmer, professional trimmer, so it's pretty good for me doing it, and it's much better than what was in the car. So, yeah. Anyway, I guess we can uh, call the driver's side done, and now we can start uh, working on the passenger side. The back looks really good. It's nice and evenly stretched. So that came out quite nicely. No wrinkles there. And like I said, I'm quite happy with the, the piping all around. It looks good. So like I said, just a few wrinkles. I haven't tried to steam it or anything yet. To see if I can get those wrinkles out. But uh, if I can't get them out, I can live with them. All right, guys, let me move on to the uh, passenger side. The only thing that's going to be different, as I'd mentioned, is that back, which is actually a detachable backrest because it is the folding backrest on the passenger side. So it's going to be slightly different. The base is going to be the same. So I'm not going to show, I'll probably end this video here to show you this seat complete. And then I'll probably bring you back on maybe on a part three, which will show the backrest of the folding backrest being done because it's slightly different from this side. But as far as the part two being completed, there is the uh, driver's side seat done and complete. So we'll call this video here. Oh, before I let you go, I figured I'd give you a comparison between the new seat and the old seat since I just pulled it up from the basement and we're just about to start tearing it apart. So obviously, here's a pretty good comparison. I hope you can see. I know it's not the best lighting in here, but uh, there's the before and after. So we'll get tucked into the uh, passenger side seat shortly and hopefully It'll come out even better than the uh, driver's side seat. All right, on to the next project. All right, I've decided to go ahead and do the passenger side seat in this video as well, since the passenger side seat base is the same as the driver's side. There's no difference in the recovery of that. The only difference is in the actual back of this passenger side seat because it is the folding back. So as mentioned previously, this is the difference between the driver's side seat and the passenger seat is the passenger side seat tips forward in order to allow pa passengers into and out of the back seat or the optional back seat, I should say. So it's a little bit different as far as recovering the back of this seat, 
versus the driver's seat. So we'll go ahead, we'll put you on video. There's basically two uh, nuts here that we need to take off either side to detach the back piece. And then that'll just leave us with the base. The base has got a little bit of a different recovering process to it as well, since the uh, back of this seat needs to be finished as well. Since the back of this seat does not get pulled down all the way and onto the bottom of the seat pan, it's actually got a wrapped section around the back as well. So another little piece of vinyl it gets wrapped around the back. So that's a little bit different too on the seat base, how it's wrapped around the bottom or the base. All right, let's get, in, get to taking this apart. We've got our wrenches standing by, so let's put you up on the uh, stand and uh, we'll take it apart. All right, seat back and seat base are apart. And that was pretty easy. I should make mention that on the bottom of the passenger side seat pan, it doesn't have the nailing strips either because they're not required because that's only glued on there. So at the back here, you can see how this is finished back here. How the seam rolls around to the side. So technically, and I'm not gonna, hold my breath here, but technically this seat should be easier to wrap than the driver's side, but we'll wait and uh, see how we do before we make that uh, statement. Um, anyway, there is a nailing strip along the bottom here, or you can actually see the nails in here as they were applied from the factory, I believe. So we've got to remove this series of nails below here to detach this bottom uh, fabric and uh, I'm sure there's a big nailing strip under there as well. Hopefully that's in good shape like it was on the driver's side. So that's pretty much about it as far as I can see. So let's go ahead and start uh, taking the material off of this back and uh, see what's underneath. Probably another cover. on this seems to be in pretty good shape having the two covers on I think probably protected it significantly the nailing strips not bad I did end up pulling a little small piece off the top over on that corner when I was pulling the old nails out um, we're going to replace the batting here around the edges and uh, do a little bit of work to bring that back up but other than that I think we'll do that fairly quickly and then we'll start fitting the new cover on and uh, getting it stapled down to the tack strip on the bottom so let me get the batting out, do a little bit of uh, restuffing, and uh, we'll come back in a bit. All right, guys, we've uh, added the new batting around the outside here to uh, bulk this up a little bit. So I've done it all around the edges and the backside as well. So we're going to get the cover now and see how we did as far as packing that out. And again, this may take, may take a few times on and off with the cover, but we'll give it a shot how it is at the moment. I think I've got it uh, filled out basically with the batting where I want it to be. The only difficulty on this cover is it's very difficult to sort of tack it at the bottom with uh, clips or clamps uh, to figure out whether you've got it exactly right or not. So I think I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to grab the staple gun and I'm going to try to do maybe do a few staples to hold it to see if I've got it where I want it finally before we do the final stapling up. But 
Anyway, uh, we'll see how things go and uh, wish me luck. All right, into the kitchen table now. We've got both seats up on display. Not quite done on the uh, passenger seat yet. We're still working on the trimming of the base and the painting of the base, but I wanted to put the seat cushion on to see how we did as far as the squareness of the cover was concerned according to the pleats and the seat base. And as you can see, that looks pretty good. Um, full disclosure, I actually repositioned the cover because when I put it on the first time, it was actually canted a little bit. It was actually, sorry, it was probably this way. So the pleats were a little bit higher on this side versus this side. So when you put the seat cushion on, it made it look a little bit obvious that it was off. So I actually repositioned the cover a little bit. But I think they look uh, pretty good. Obviously, there are certain areas that I could probably do a little bit better here. This little seam's got a little bit of a dent in it. I did notice in the kits, and I don't think there's anything I could do about this. If you notice where the seam is here, where it gets folded over and tucked, it's a little bit higher on the passenger side seat than it is on the driver's side seat. But uh, there's nothing really I could do. Just look at the covers themselves, actually. It's probably just because of the differences in the attachment points for the seat backs. You know, with uh, being a fixed back versus the tilt back, that's probably got something to do with it. So nothing too concerning, but I just thought I'd point that out if you didn't notice it. Other than that, I think it looks, uh, they look pretty good. Again, a few wrinkles here and there, but I think the piping is pretty good all the way around. I think it's not bad. The backs look good. The seat bases look good. Like I said, we'll get this trimmed out. And the other thing I need to do is uh, I need to figure out how I'm going to trim. Let me just pull this seat out here. And let me just pop this up on the top. So there's what the base looks like at the moment. So I need to figure out what to do as far as trimming all these pieces off. Um, this one I can probably do a little sort of tuck under and staple kind of thing. But uh, we'll figure out what we need to do as far as that's concerned. Obviously, we need to uh, paint the seat base as well. And as mentioned, we need to do the interior trim on the uh, material. But that's how that looks on the inside. So getting pretty close to getting this uh, project completed. But uh, We'll probably take another hour or two to get this done. Anyway, I'm going to get this base, uh, the back detached from the base so we can get it painted. And then we'll go on to the trims process and fix up the trimming here on the back. And then this will be good to go back in the car. All right, there's the update. All right, guys, I think uh, the seats turned out not too bad, uh, if I don't say so myself. So uh, here they are up on the kitchen table. One final last look. Again, a few wrinkles here and there. I haven't got the steamer yet, so I potentially could get these out. But uh, as far as the uh, seat bases and the seat covers on the backs look, they're actually pretty good as far as alignment is concerned. The line's sort of dead center of the uh, the line's going vertical, same thing here, pretty centered. So I'm happy with that. The bases pretty much have both of the dome shape that I was looking for. Again, a little bit ripply on the beading on the one side, but I tried to stuff that out as much as I could and that's about as best as I could get it. So you know, certain things I can live with. So I think it looks pretty good. I'm uh, pretty darn happy with that. It was a few days labor to actually get to that point and like I mentioned, I'm not a trimmer, so if I can do it, pretty much anybody can with a little bit of patience. Anyway, so that's it, guys. We'll put an end to this video, um, and I think the next video will be probably doing the back panel, which would be the final panel of the interior, as I'd mentioned. So we're getting there. So 
Should be a little bit easier when we get to the point of putting the interior back in the car because I have quite a few of the components already done and ready to go for that, including the carpet. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and thanks for subscribing. We will see you on the next video.